Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the SDG Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call, organized by SKP Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that the conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Naveen Agrawal, Head Institutional Equities at SKP Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of APG Limited and SKP Securities to this financial results conference call with the leadership team at APG. We have with us Mr. Ravi Junjunwala, Chairman, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Raju Junjunwala, Vice Chairman, along with their colleagues, Mr. Manish Kulati, Executive Director, Mr. Om Prakash Admira, Group CFO, and Mr. Kulshan Kumar Sakuja, CFO. Opening remarks from Mr. Junjunwala, followed by a Q&A session. And over to Ravi Ji. Thank you, Sakunj. And uh, friends, good afternoon and welcome to welcome to our Q3 financial results conference call for the year 23-24. As per World Steel Association's data, total world steel production did not register any growth in 2023, but compared to 2022, it remained more or less similar at the same level of 18-82 million tons uh, last year. Similarly, world steel production outside of China also remained similar at the similar levels of 2022 at about 868 million tons. Chinese steel production, while growing in the first half of 2023, dropped significantly in the second half and full year period of 23 to 1,020 million tons, which was again in the same region as 2022 due to demand erosion. However, persistent low demand, domestic demand within China, resulted into increased Chinese steel exports, which increased by about 34% from 67 million tons in 2022 to 97 million tons in 23, obviously putting pressure on steel production in the rest of the world. Among some, some of the large steel producing regions, U.S. stood at the same level in 2023 at about 81 million tons as in 2022, while production in EU declined by about 7%. India at the same time grew by about 12% on the back of healthy domestic demand from infrastructure and real estate sectors. Here we need to remember that in India, steel production is predominantly through blast furnace routes, and also a significant portion of steel is also produced from induction furnaces, which is not our customer segment. We continue to concentrate on our exports, which remained at about uh, which remained at about 50 percent of our total sales in the first three quarters of the current year. Coming specifically to our Q3 performance, as you can see from our results, the electro pricing remains under pressure, although we operated at about 85% capacity utilization for all the three quarters combined at 80,000 capacity. Due to long duration of production cycle for our products, in the previous quarter, commercial production from our expanded capacity to 100,000 tons did not go into the market. We will start selling uh, electrodes from this quarter, from this expanded capacity. However, our capacity, capacity utilization remains the highest amongst all the Western world graphite electrode companies. The needle core prices keep directing due to difficult market conditions but there is always a time lag between needle coke procurement time and sales of finished electrodes. As you know, our production cycle varies between two and a half months to five, five and a half months. 
our raw material inventory levels are now normalized. We do not, we do not have any inventory overhang. Global economic uncertainty continues to limit steel demand and thus constraining steel production. We do not see much improvement in steel production in 2024 also. However, the positive for our industry is that the decarbonization efforts have now become an irreversible process with more and more electric arc furnaces, uh, greenfield electric arc furnaces being announced every month. Till date, as per our information, more than 90 million tons of new greenfield capacities have already been announced in different parts of the world with uh, US and EU leading, the, leading these uh, numbers. And we keep seeing such announcements regularly. Out of this, about 90 million tons is already into operation. Another 30 million tons is expected to be operation between current year and 2025. And the rest of it post-25. As we have said in our earlier calls, we expect graphite electro demand to increase gradually by about 150 to 200,000 tons by 2029-2030. This is a significant increase over current demand of about 5 to 500 to 600,000 tons of uh, ultra-high power electrodes, including China. Just to repeat the context for anyone who is new listening to this call, steel industry causes 7 to 8 percent of total man-made pollution in the world and about 23% of all industrial pollution. Steel produced through blast furnace emits about four times more carbon than the same steel produced through the electric arc furnace. And this is what is giving a very strong push all over the world where companies are switching from blast furnaces to electric arc furnaces. The Western world production through electric arc furnaces without China which used to be around 44% six, seven years ago, has already reached 50% in 2023 and is likely to exceed 55% in the next three, four years. Friends, as you know, we have successfully completed our expansion and our new facilities are running perfectly well. Other than HEG, no other company has announced any new capacities in the Western world. It takes at least four to five years to build a new greenfield capacity and about two to three years to expand an existing brownfield plant. On the contrary, one of the graphite companies, uh, one of the leading graphite companies, has recently announced closure of one of their plants in US with a capacity of about 25,000 tons. You are aware that HEG has been exporting more than two-thirds of its production to some 30-plus countries for a very long time, and we have a diverse and established customer base, and we are working hard to get a larger piece of the requirements, and we also keep adding new customers from time to time in several countries. In this backdrop, our extended capacity of 20,000 tons per annum has come at an opportune time when the electrode market is likely to expand at a fairly fast pace around the world. While we remain solidly upbeat about the continuous growth of electric arc furnace production in the coming decades, resulting into continuous rise in electrode demand, at present we are seeing a period of subdued steel production due to several global factors which is likely to continue through the first half of 2024, resulting into subdued demand for our products in the next few quarters. We believe electric arc furnaces will grow at a CAGR of about 3 to 3.5% in the next decade, which, was, which would directly translate into a substantial increase in electro demand. And in the backdrop of uh, a fairly high technology area that we are operating in, uh, we don't see any newcomer uh, or any new electrode company coming into business. 
We at SCG have been operating world's largest graphite plant under one roof with a capacity of 80,000 tons for a long time. And currently, with our expansion to 100,000 tons, which is now operational, we are now amongst the lowest cost producers in the world due to economies of scale and our operational efficiencies. Now, a couple of words about our new subsidiary, TAWC. Due to, due to economic economies of scale in the CAPEX outflow and considering the huge demand expected in the EV sector, it has approved the decision to start with a 20,000 ton graphite anode powder plant in one go, which initially we were planning to do in two phases of 2,000 tons each. The land is already acquired and the construction has started, which we intend to complete by mid 2025. We'll keep you informed about this progress from time to time. In conclusion, friends, our third quarter, 23-24, has been satisfactory given the tough market conditions under which we are operating. The next two, three quarters may see margins remaining under some pressure, but we are hoping that the demand will come back sometime from uh, second half of 2024. And we, we, are, we are going to take full advantage of our expanded capacity. We have all the technological capacities, operational efficiencies, and market reach to take our company forward and to succeed and thrive in an all-emerging situation, creating long-term value for our shareholders. With this, I will now pass on the floor to our CFO, Gulshan, who will take us through the financial figures. Following that, uh, our Vice Chairman Riju and our Executive Director Manish and I will be delighted to address any inquiries you may have regarding electrodes and also graphite and note powder. Over to Gulshan. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, friends. I will now briefly I will now briefly take you through companies operating and financial performance for the quarter ended 31st December 2023. HEG recorded revenue from operations of Rs. 562 crores as against Rs. 614 crores in the previous quarter and Rs. 530 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Revenue for the quarter saw a decrease of 8.5% as compared to the previous quarter. During the quarter ended 31st December 2023, the company delivered a bit of including other income of Rs. 110 crores as against 130 crores in the previous quarter and Rs. 170 CR in the corresponding quarter of the previous financial year. The company, on a standalone basis, recorded a net profit of Rs. 37 crores for the quarter ended 31st December 2023 as against 62 crores in the previous quarter and 103 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous financial year. The company is a long-term debt-free and having treasury size of nearly 950 crores as on 31st December 2023. Now, with more questions from the participants, the detailed presentation has been uploaded on the company's website and on the stock sheet. Now, we would like to address any questions or queries you have in your mind. Over to Naveen. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question and limit themselves to two questions. You may join the queue again and time permitting, we will take your follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Pritesh from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, you uh, mentioned the capacity utilization at 85% is 940. Uh, can you give us the capacity utilization for quarter 3? Quarter 3 alone, 
Yeah. It's, it's more or less same. A couple of percentages plus minus it's in the same region. So we've been consistently running, let's say, at that level for the last few quarters. So which means the volume growth in nine months over nine months is largely flat, right? It's a flat volume. See, if we, uh, you will see a volume growth compared to, uh, between the two fiscals. So nine months, uh, yes, there has been a volume growth, and uh, by the time we close the year, uh, we believe that we would have sold about uh, 10 to 12 percent more than last year. So you can take this figure of 10 to 12 percent for the nine months. Okay. And sir, on the spread side, so what we see is that there is a continuous spread reduction from quarter one to quarter two, quarter three. Uh, when you're yes. saying that the capacity utilization is largely similar. So if you could just share the spread in uh, dollar terms, what should be the spread? Uh, dollar terms will be a, a very will become a very uh, specific answer uh, to be given in uh, public domain. But if you uh, just take our results, I think you can make a very good uh, guess yourself uh, uh, about how our, uh, our spreads have fared between the three quarters. They have been uh, coming down. Uh, that is that that is sure. That is what you uh, see in our bottom line. And the main reason for that is, see, uh, the needle prices have also been coming down. But actually, there's a lag effect where electrodes take two months to make and electrodes take five months to uh, make. So this electrodes fall, and it takes time to spread the for the spread to adjust. You know, the consumption needle go price is higher and the electro prices are lower for that particular quarter. So that's what hurts. That's very unique to us just because of uh, long process times. Okay. And so my last question is, uh, we are hearing about this electric arc furnace lead capacity addition from your side and electric arc furnace lead steel growth from your side for the last five, six quarters now. Uh, so, uh, let's say when you're giving this steel production number of 183 million and saying it's flat, what is the electric arc production from electric arc furnace and the growth? You see, as I, as I gave you that figure in my in my uh, short speech, uh, it used to be 44 percent till about five six years ago, minus China, and uh, it has gone up to about 50 percent. So in the international concept, 44 to 50 is like 16, 17 percent increase, which is pretty substantial if you if you look at the whole world. And uh, in the next three four years, this is probably going to go beyond 55 to 58 percent. So which will be like from uh, 45 percent to 57, 58, or close to 60 percent over a six, seven, eight year period. Sir, I was asking about calendar year 23. Uh, what is the production growth from electric arc furnace? I will uh, uh, I, I'll give uh, color to that. You see, uh, the electric arc furnace steel uh, it will be about 430 odd MMP in the rest of the world and add about 120 coming from like 110 or 20, then they, they need to come with figures. So it should be you to, if, if your question is, how much of that one triple eight million metric tons of electric arc furnace? The answer would be about 540 to 550. Is 430, has it grown this year? See, 430, as you have seen in the figures, uh, in World Series Association, we also mentioned in the call, it's absolutely stagnant for all regions. China did grow in the first half, then dropped in the second half, and then the rest of the world exactly at the same level. If you look at 22 figures, steel figures, and 23, they add up to exa almost exactly the same number with barring one or two million tons in such a large uh, base. So the steel production has been stagnant, and uh, thus the electric arc furnace as a portion of that has also been stagnant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mihir Vyas from Nine Rays Equity, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. I uh, wanted to ask, can you give some color on uh, potential revenue and margins from the anode business? Uh, did you, will you take that? Yeah. 
potential to be investing around uh, 6000 crores into this particular business and the investment to out ratio should be more or less 1 is to 1 or depending on the policies around 1 is to 1.3 and as of today as per our business plan we are assuming a safe uh, margin of around 25% data on this particular uh, business going concern as i mean second year onwards kind of you can say okay and plan production should start around march or april of 2025 okay thank you and uh, One more question I wanted to ask: uh, How much drop in EBITDA margin is expected due to the drop in demand and excess supply from China? I mean, India does not produce any. If you are asking about the anode powder today, India does not no, produce no, no. any anode powder. I am asking about the electrodes. Electrode money should answer that, I think. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, See, you are uh, specifically asking about what is the impact, impact going to be because of uh, China. Uh, um, uh, my answer to that would be that uh, China predominantly makes uh, and also exports the uh, high power grade, which is not the ultra high power grade. They are not yet as established as the main players are. They are trying, uh, but uh, we do not see that we do not uh, relate this to in, the, in this way because of China. What is going to be the margin reduction? We don't look at it this way. We look at our segment in which we operate. Where we are strong. That is ultra high power grade, where the our uh, the Western producers uh, are the main uh, competitors uh, in that segment. Okay. So uh, I believe there won't be any reduction in capacity utilization for the same reasons. So I, I was asking. Uh, I hope there won't be any reduction in the capacity utilization because of these reasons, right? No, we have operated at 85 percent all through the year. We are uh, working at highest capacity utilization in all of the industry, and as we go to this 24, we are counting ourselves as 100,000 ton capacity. So, of course, for some uh, one or two quarters, just because this we now have utilization percentage on one lakh tons. You will see a little bit of uh, reduction in that, but we'll climb up on that, and uh, we are sure that within a matter of one to two years, we'll be uh, within a matter of one year, we'll be back at 85 percent on 100,000 also. So if you if you compare some of our, I mean, we have only three or four main competitors in the world, and then if you exclude China, and as uh, Manish uh, rightly explained, we we are not really competing with China in that segment. So in this higher segment, there are only three, four companies in the world. And if you if you are tracking them, uh, it's all public information. Uh, at least one of them is operating at uh, uh, low 40s, 40, 42, 45 percent kind of utilization. The others are in the region of 60, 65, and we we still believe that. We we are uh, we are at 85 percent, which is which is probably the highest in the industry. Okay. And uh, one more question: uh, How is our arrangement with suppliers contracts on uh, quarterly, half yearly, or yearly basis? It's normally quarterly. In a, in a in a declining market of electrode and a declining market of raw material, it is it is quarterly. Okay. Sure. I'll continue if I need something else. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my dear, all the participants, that you may please press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Saurav Jain from Sony D Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Um, my question is about the site and node facility. Uh, recently, there has been, uh, you know, article that uh, news article that uh, says after BMW has also uh, said goodbye to electric cars. Uh, so, what are your thoughts for our upcoming and not facility considering the huge leakage that we are doing? Also, there has been other articles saying that lithium-ion battery performance has reached a plateau in recent years. And using silicon instead of lithium enables significantly higher energy density and faster charging. 
so that's why it's been uh, focused by many OEMs, global OEMs like DM, Mercedes, even Airbus. So uh, I I know last on the last call also you had clarified that uh, you don't uh, think uh, threatened by this uh, development, but uh, this news has been you know quite uh, uh, persistent for last couple of quarters and. Um, now it is a, a strong signal for after Toyota BM uh, what BMW did last week. Yeah, your thoughts, please. So there is, I mean, um, you can check this. And there are new developments happening almost on a weekly basis. New kinds of technologies, new kind of things. As far as the core goals, I think lithium ion batteries are here to stay for the next decade, at least two to three decades. And some kind of improvisation will keep happening, mixing of silicon, mixing of some other uh, elements. So graphite, as the core conductor of uh, this thing, would not uh, be the, uh, we do not uh, foresee a big change in volume. Again, like you have lithium ion batteries that everyone's talking about, sodium ion batteries, as far as the stationary applications go. There also, I mean, uh, we will be in a position to produce. Uh, sodium ion, uh, raw material for sodium ion batteries as well. And uh, the, in the next few years, I think uh, lithium ion as the main infrastructure for moving batteries is not something that, will, uh, that we actually seem uh, to do this thing about of being replaced by something else. Keep seeing changes, you keep seeing whatever, but the infrastructure once made for lithium ion in terms of charging, etc., etc. We do not see that uh, thing changing. And the, uh, plus the big plants of lithium ion batteries that are coming up in India, they are already been announced and they have already been uh, implemented and they have more than uh, 50,000 gigawatt hour of uh, facility that is coming up within India. By established names like XI, Amar Raja, Reliance, Ola, etc., etc. And it just means uh, the, like, uh, the Powder consumption of around 50,000 tons, which will include stationary applications also. So, I mean, this discussion will keep happening. You know, I mean, every one month, the, some kind, some new technology will come. It is happening over there. And rest assured, there's a lot of innovation happening our, at our own end also. How to keep pace with all these innovations so that we can keep, uh, you know, trying to produce the raw materials that will ultimately be required for these applications. Okay, uh, that's helpful, sir. Uh, sir, my uh, last question is, uh, if you can point out some difference for uh, your opinion on uh, how, uh, how come we are, uh, you, you know, our utilization is around 85% while uh, other players are running at 40 to 60, 65%? We are more competitive. This is the relative performance. That's all I can say. Uh, competitive on cost, uh, com competitive in marketing, whatever. I mean, yes. uh, but that, that's true. That's the fact. That's all from my side. Thank you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Jumdar from PNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I have a few questions. Uh, I just want to uh, know, uh, uh, you mentioned about the world's largest produce operating at 40% neutralization. Uh, it's common knowledge now. So uh, uh, is there any takeover opportunity for uh, any, any uh, M&A activity available uh, in the space uh, right now? I mean, there are only three pro players. I mean, there's nothing hidden in this industry. I mean, if you... If you really study whatever is available, there are, there are only three four players. So whatever will happen, if at all it happens, it, it has to be only between these three four, no, nothing else. Actually, uh, let me ask this question the other way around. Now, the, that the, even at neutralization, the cash losses are uh, about thousand dollars for this player. So how is it likely to play out? Either it shuts down or it gets acquired. When the prices are moving up, will the prices start moving up on its own? And when the prices start moving up again, is there enough capacity in the world today to absorb this, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the new demand? 
because if the industry is operating at around 50% or 60% rate, then even if the demand grows in the next two or three quarters, is there any capacity available to offer this impact on the prices? You see, as far as your first question is concerned, I mean, obviously, uh, nobody can talk about it uh, in public domain. I mean, uh, but the second question, yeah, you are right. I mean, uh, whatever is the overall capacity utilization, uh, whether it is 40 or 70 or 80, it will it'll, uh, keep going up as the demand keeps growing. And just to clarify one point, which is very typical in our industry, it takes, as I said, between two to two and a half months for the, for the easiest electrode to produce, and it takes as long as five to six months for something called nipples, which is uh, which is a pin which joins the two electrodes. Right. Yeah. Although the weight is only four percent, but uh, without that nipple, the electrodes are of no use. So that takes anywhere between five to six months, depending on the size, quality, and things like that. So. Given that uh, the process is very long, and uh, uh, not not just long, but there are four or five different processes uh, in which uh, within which the electrode uh, is produced. So even in the very peak demand or uh, highest prices that this industry saw in uh, 2017, 18, 19, the overall capacity utilization of each one of us combined or uh, separately, uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it would be, it would not be more than 90 percent, because it's not easy to to run the entire plant uh, with five different processes at more than 90, 91 percent. I mean, something or the other in the large plant just break down, and that has an impact on the the whole supply chain, on the whole production chain. So, given that, uh, given this peculiar issue with, with regard to our industry, where you, well, let's say 100 percent is 90 and not 100. So this is what it is. Uh, so the demand of electrode, I mean, if we are talking about 90 million tons, which is already 90 million tons of new electric power furnace capacities, which are already announced. And uh, it is a lot of this information is in public domain as to who is putting up how, how what what size of a plant, and uh, when are these plants going to be operational? Uh, the, the growth is going to be very large. I mean, uh, once this 90 is all established and operational, the increase in demand will be. I mean, uh, I'm just quoting somebody else. Somebody else meaning one of our uh, one of our uh, computers. I mean, they are talking in, the, in terms of 200,000 tons, and this 90 million tons is not a fixed number. I mean, uh, as you can imagine, we we track this this part of the information very closely every month, every week, and this number keeps increasing. I mean, as late as uh, three four weeks ago. This number used to be 84, 85 million tons. So in the last 30 days itself, there have been new announcement of 5, 6 million tons. So it keeps it keeps increasing because uh, this carbon emission and uh, environment is here to stay. It is not going to go away anytime soon. And especially in America and Europe and other parts of the Western world, they, they are taking it extremely seriously. So. So basically, this is the answer to, to to your inquiry. Yeah, right. And my other question question was regarding an additional 20 kg. Uh, who is the supplier of needle coke? Because as I understand that there are a limited number of needle uh, petroleum grade needle coke suppliers. That is a big constraint in the uh, rapid approach. So it's not a constraint. I mean, there are four or five suppliers. Uh, yes, I mean. Uh, the electrode industry gets back to 1992, 95 percent capacity utilization. Then the demand of uh, needle coke and the uh, and the capacity of uh, needle coke and the demand of needle coke for the graphite industry will be more or less matching. It is, it is there is still enough capacity to to supply. I mean, there will be occasional mismatch where maybe one month, two months, three months. 
somebody will be short of supply, but the uh, current level of 80, 90 million tons of additional capacity of electric car furnaces coming in, resulting into more demand of electrode, uh, the supply of needle coke and demand of needle coke is more or less going to match. And if I can have a last question, is there any uh, capacity coming in needle coke uh, anywhere in the world? Any infrastructure? No, nothing. And uh, I don't not have that uh, figure in mind, but probably the last needle coke plant would have been put about 45, 50 years ago. So it's like exactly like graphite. I mean, we came into production in 1977, and today we are in year 2024, so close to 50 years, uh, 37 years. Uh, there has not been any new greenfield plant anywhere in the world. So it's exactly the same situation in uh, needle coke. Probably I'm wrong when I'm saying 47, 50 years. I mean, needle coke, new, last needle coke plant would have been more than like 60, 65 years. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so thank you. Sir. Of, uh, in both the cases, it's not a question about uh, technology. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sahil Sangri from Munna Central Capital. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you are. Question, so, uh, my question is uh, more of uh, about the uh, the current pandemic. Um, I mean, while we, um, you know, this economy discussed that so the, uh, the world is China and demand for, uh, uh, you know, electrodes has not uh, gone up so much. Uh, and on the other side, uh, you know, world like China, uh, electro manufacturers, uh, utilization has slightly reduced. Um, so I just wanted to understand that um, uh, why, uh, in this case, is such a somewhat surprising, um, and is this uh, this is one of the reasons of the Chinese uh, intros? Uh, because I hear that some of the intros also can be mentioned along with uh, the USPs. So just if you can explain this a little bit, uh, you know, in detail. I'll take the second part first. I mean, it's not it's not uh, possible to replace uh, UHP electrode by by HP. I mean, so there's a difference in definition. I don't know what what you mean by HP and UHP. These are very loosely used terms. But so to answer specifically, uh, in a furnace, if you require a particular quality of electrode, which is let's say called UHP. Uh, you can't replace it by it. It is, uh, basically it's not a matter of that uh, instead of two kilos per ton of steel, you can use three kilos per ton by switching from UHP to UHP. HP will just not work. It is not a question of 20, 30, 40 percent more consumption. So you need you need an electrode which will uh, which will withstand the the high temperatures in the UHP furnace. So that that's the first answer. And what was the second question? If you just repeat that. Yeah. So my question was that uh, what was the primary reason for the pressure on the prices of electrodes? Because I mean, on one side we are saying that the demand for electrode work in China is not uh, grown or moved much, and on the other side there has been these utilizations of uh, few companies like China which has come down. So I mean, what's what's the real reason for the uh, rising pressure? I mean, you, you're, you're answering your own question. I mean, obviously there are four or five players in the industry, and uh, and uh, whoever is more competitive will, will sell more. I mean, we believe our quality is as good as anybody else, and we also believe that our cost structure is better than most of the others. So this is obvious. Okay, okay. Got it, got it. Thank you, thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Machar from Machar Industries Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, you are. So, basically, I am an investor. I have two questions. One, you said that you have already a running at a capitalization of 85%. Now, as I understand that we are ready with the 
एडिशनल
So you know there is no technical tie up with one particular company, but uh, from time to time we will be taking help from whatever uh, technical uh, resource uh, required. Okay, noted. And the other thing is the manufacturing of anodes, one significant cost is power cost, right? Because it's a very big component of anode manufacturing. So how will, how will be the facilities using power for this? So uh, the, uh, we have selected the state of uh, Madhya Pradesh for this particular uh, industry, which uh, we are getting a lot of subsidies from the government. And one particular subsidy is uh, around the pesa we are taking on the power cost for this particular facility. So the net cost of power to us should not be more than 50 to 50 pesa for uh, this facility when it comes up. And apart from that, obviously, the whole focus of the buyers in uh, this particular uh, industry is how much of uh, uh, green electricity are you producing, uh, which we are already in touch with a lot of, uh, you know, solar and wind manufacturers who work closely along with us uh, to have a kind of dedicated uh, facility of uh, 200 megawatts, 100 megawatts, uh, that kind of uh, number in which we can uh, do a buyback arrangement for them for electricity. So that is still work in progress, but uh, you know, that will further bring the cost of uh, power down for us, uh, which we hope, uh, you know, this will not be more than four or uh, five rupees as a uh, average uh, cost of power. We have assumed around uh, uh, 5.5 to 6 rupees in our uh, business plan, but I'm quite sure by the time we work on it, we should be able to save on some power cost over there. Okay. Uh, last question. So, uh, as far as Indian and old market is concerned, how do you see it? I mean, are there are there customers who are for manufacturing factories and how frequently a lot of these people are interested in China? So, how do you see this landscape changing? Uh, how is the system developing as far as the road manufacturing in India is concerned? So, the Indian battery, uh, this thing, uh, you uh, must have already uh, read around. 50 uh, gigawatt hour of, of uh, uh, lithium ion battery manufacturing has already been uh, signed up by the government. We've increased this by 10 megawatts, uh, 10 gigawatt hour more. There is a lot of uh, scope for uh, anode production over there. And apart from us, Imadri and uh, 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 one or two more players, no one has announced very, very serious kind of. Uh, for the lithium ion battery so far. So we see ourselves as, you know, I mean, HEV has to be the leader in this as far as the timing goes. And that's what the uh, chairman also mentioned when he said that we will uh, start commercial production by the second half of 2025. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question in the queue. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Jinwala for closing remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Craig, for asking some very pertinent and very pointed questions. I'm grateful to you for your interest in our company, and I will continue to engage with you on a quarterly basis and hopefully with some better results, with some better numbers. Thank you very much for that, and uh, see you again after about three months. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of STP Securities Limited, we thank you for this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now discuss your lines. Thank you.